Sometimes you may need to work on an audio recording which has not been recorded to a click track. Problems can arise when a song doesn't conform to a tempo map. For example, MIDI parts or tempo-based effects will not synchronize because the imported audio doesn't recognize this tempo grid. I am going to show your method so you can manually map out the tempo of the imported audio and as a result the click will follow the varying tempo of the audio track. To demonstrate this technique I've imported a stereo mix. This was recorded around 1957 and in those days click tracks were a lot less common. It's a pretty tight performance but there are parts where the tempo varies. So that's the track, which is by Little Water, and that's the one I'm going to be working on. At the moment, if I turn on the metronome and press play, obviously the click is out of time with the track. The question is, how do I make the click play in time with the track? The first thing I need to do is to define the downbeat for the first bar of the song. I'll zoom in on the waveform. We have the snare pick up and then the downbeat of the song falling just before the third beat of the first bar. I want to reposition that downbeat so it starts at bar 2. One way to do this is to just drag the object over so that the downbeat hits on bar 2. Remember, you can use the ALT modifier to disable snapping. I'll undo that. Alternatively, if you're a keen hotkey user, you can place the play cursor to where the downbeat hits. Then press SHIFT plus H to insert something called a hotspot at the cursor position. Notice that there is now a dotted vertical line to indicate the hotspot. Place the play cursor at bar 2, then use the hotkey CTRL ALT plus P and the downbeat marked by the hotspot will jump to the start of bar 2. So now we have a one bar intro including the snare pickup and the song starts at bar 2. Next I want to ascertain the downbeat of the next bar of the song in order to work out the tempo of the first bar. At the moment this downbeat is falling just before the third bar. I need to adapt the bar 3 grid line so that it coincides with that downbeat. Here's how I'm going to do it. Make sure snap to bars and beats is enabled. The play cursor is already placed at bar 2. So I'm going to the menu item tempo, set new bar position marker. The marker is added to the list so click OK to exit to the window. A green marker has now been inserted at bar 2. There is another way to add bar position markers which I find is very convenient and I'm going to be using this method from now on. Switch from your normal mouse mode by clicking on the clock icon to enable pitch shift time stretch mouse mode. Next move the mouse cursor along to the start of bar 3 and hold down the alt key and left click. Doing this inserts a new marker so now we have bar position markers placed at bars 2 and 3. I'm now placing the mouse cursor over the marker at bar 3. Notice it turns to a double headed arrow. I can now left click and drag the marker to adjust the grid so it falls on the downbeat. If I double click between the markers to select the range, enable loop and turn on the metronome, you will now hear that the bar of music is in time with the click. The tempo for that bar has also been adapted and will update on the transport when in playback mode. So bar 1 is in time of the click, but I need to listen further along to pinpoint the variations in tempo in relation to the metronome. Then I can see how much tempo drift there is and what parts of the track need to be tempo mapped. I will insert bar position markers when needed as I go. I am drawing in a range between bars 3 and 5.
There's a slight drift with the click, so I'm putting a bar position marker at bar 5 by alt left clicking. Now I'm dragging that marker to the left until the bar 5 grid line hits with the downbeat. I'm also putting a marker at beat 2 of bar 4 and aligning that with the snare hit by left clicking and dragging the marker. I think it also needs a marker at beat 3 of the third bar. Just a very slight adjustment. Now I'm going to draw in a range between bars 5 and 7. Again some slight adjustments needed. So I'm putting a BP marker at bar 7. I'm going to adjust that marker using the snare hit as a visual cue. Then a marker at beat 2 of bar 6. You can see where the snare transient is, so that's quite a good indicator of where to align the grid. So I've mapped those first seven bars to a reasonable standard, and the metronome is adapting to the tempo based on the realigned grid. I'd like to emphasize that although I'm in pitch shift time stretch mouse mode, this isn't essential for realigning the grid. This mode is just a convenient way for adding bar position markers. You can in fact move the grid in normal mouse mode as well, just by left clicking and dragging the marker. You can also add markers from the tempo menu or even set up a hotkey. The bar position markers can be added on the bar or beat, and how many you add will depend on how much drift there is within the track. This particular track has a prominent snare downbeat on bars 2 and 4, so that gives me a good visual indication of where to align the grid. So sometimes it may make sense to put markers on beats 2 and 4, and then adjust the markers in order to align the grid with the snare hit. Then it's a matter of working your way through the track and comparing the tempo with the metronome, you can add markers on the fly and realign the grid to match the audio until you get to the end of the song. For a more automated approach, the remix agent would also work for a song like this, which has only slight variations in tempo. But this manual method is more flexible, especially if the track has extreme tempo variations or even tempo changes. I'm really just giving you information which hopefully you can adapt to your own needs and workflow. So I've managed to remap that section fairly accurately just using the visual cues. Before I finish I'd like to mention, if I open the tempo time signature window again you can see a list of all the tempo markers I've added. Each marker has its own BPM value, so this gives you an idea of how much drift there is in the tempo of the track. I will cover the settings for this window in a future tutorial. You can also left click on this downward arrow and access another marker menu. You can insert markers from here and also jump to marker positions from the list. Lastly you can open the marker manager by clicking on the manager button and selecting the markers tab. This window is useful for quickly navigating the timeline based on the marker position. Click to the left of the marker and hit the space bar. So this could also be useful for checking for any inaccuracies with the tempo remapping. Remember you need to have loop mode turned on to get that effect. I've chosen to use a finished stereo track for this demonstration, but this tempo mapping technique will work just as effectively with a multi-track recording, especially with multi-track drums. 
Because the bass drum and snare would be on separate tracks, it should be fairly easy to remap the tempo by dragging the bar position markers to match the kick and snare hits. And finally, one last thing. To avoid any disasters, don't forget to switch back to your preferred mouse mode after you've finished using the pitch shift time stretch mouse mode. Remember, you can still adjust markers in normal mouse mode. So until next time, happy tempo mapping! <laughs>